All right, so you guys don't know what a box plot is. I asked ahead of time and nobody can tell me what this means. I will explain it to you. This is something that divides up your data into four quartiles. So if this is shoe size, this is the median. Please draw this and label it. I'll tell you what each thing is. The median means the middle one. So that means if we listed all of your shoe sizes, in order, from smallest to biggest, we'd pick the middle one, and that would be nine, okay? Now, we go to the ends, and those become pretty obvious. That 12, that's the max. Everybody write that right above it. And what do you think I'm going to say to write above the five? Min. But that leaves the 10 and the 8. Those are the middle of the top half and the middle of the bottom half. That's what they are. They're medians, but they're medians of the top half and median of the bottom half. So this right here is called Q1. And actually, I did it wrong. I apologize. I have mine going with the biggest numbers on the left. And so this whole graph is backwards. I'm sorry. I'm going to punt and put, you can leave the same box on there, but erase these numbers. And I'm going to try to remember what they were and put them in order from left to right. Otherwise, my Q1 and my Q3 won't be right. Uh, this is going to be um, 9, and this was an 8. And I, what was the smallest size? I think it was a 5. So I'm going to go 5 here. And I haven't done box pots since Algebra 2. Okay, so I forgot. You got to go from left to right. And this is max. And this is min. Okay, there we go. Then this is called Q1. Your calculator can calculate that. If you give it a bunch of data, it's Q1. That stands for quartile 1. This is Q3, and that stands for quartile 3. Weirdly, there is no two. Daniela, just didn't bother. What's wrong? Just can't read it? Should I move it up or? No, no. All right. Okay. I'll make it a little bigger. So, 5, 8, 9, 10, 12. What was the median again? Nine. Nine. What's the median of the bottom half? Eight. Eight. What's the median of the top half? Ten. Ten. And those have names. They're Q1 and Q3. Now, that divides it into four nice little chunks. And so I can say that 25% of my data is in there. 25% of my data is in there. 25% of my data is in here. And 25% of my data is in there. Do you get it's divided into four chunks? So let's say that you look at your shoes and they are a seven, are you between the eight and the nine? No, you're between the five and the eight. You are in the bottom 25% if you have a size seven shoe. I didn't do this actually for real. I don't know what your shoe sizes are, but I will tell you when I've pulled people in the past, nine is pretty close to the average. But then there's women's sizes, men's sizes. It gets all really confusing, so we won't use real data here. But if you had a size 7, you'd be in here, which would make you in this percent, which is the bottom 25 percentile, the bottom quarter. All right. Now, most of you guys have really good grades. This is an honors class, and so you guys have signed up for the harder class, and so most of you guys have a pretty good GPA. Do you get there is some kid who's got the highest GPA of them all? Now, at our school, we used to have like, just one valedictorian that was the, the highest GPA person. But it got kind of weird and toxic because if a person had the highest GPA but they took super easy classes, do you get that's not really totally fair? Yeah. You know what I mean? If somebody else has a high GPA and they took all incredibly hard classes, that's not fair to compare them. And then there was even, it could be mistakes where one kid has a slightly higher GPA than another one because of a mistake in a grade and all of a sudden they're the valedictorian and then oh nope they're not anymore so i like the way we do it now you guys know how we do it now 
we just have a certain level, and if you're above that, you're considered valedictorian. Okay? And it's not 4.0. 4.0, it sounds like it's perfect, but with a weighted grade system like we have, where you get more grade points, GPA points, for taking like IBs and AP classes, the highest GPA to get valedictorian, I don't know what it is, but let's say it's like 4.1. Then anybody who's above that, you're considered the valedictorian. Then it kind of cuts out the like, who this person wasn't really as good as this person, and there's, there's less arguing about who really is the valedictorian. So, all right, so how do we get this data? We're going to type in five numbers, no, nope, ten numbers on your iPad. We're going to do ages. <coughs> if you'd be willing, would you please? Raise your hand, I will call on you, and you'll be one of my 14 people, or sorry, 10 people or so that I put in. Uh, and I'd like to just do real ages from this class, but not everybody, okay? So if you're willing to share your age, would you raise your hand and tell your age? Yes. 15. 15. Yes. 15. 15. Yes. 15. Yes. 16. 16. Any yes? Another 15? Thank you. Yes. 15. All right, a lot of 15-year-olds. Somebody else who's younger or older willing to share so I can, yep, 15. another 15. Yes? 16. Another 16. Any others? One, two, oh, yep. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, I know there's some kids in here that are younger and they're not going to want to say it, so I'm going to go with 14 as the last one. There, I got 10. There's my 10 numbers. Now, we're going to enter those in the calculator. Are you ready? Well, what do you just type them all in on the main screen? No, you do not. You find the button on your calculator that says stat. All right, so I found the stat button. Hit it. Now, the first thing that comes up is edit, and that makes sense because you're going to edit your list of numbers. So hit enter. Then you'll see L1, L2, L3, and a lot of kids wouldn't have had one of their lists if I hadn't wiped your calculators clean. Now, there's some kids where they still are missing list one, and I can wipe your calculator at a higher level to get your list one to come back. Is there anybody who is currently not able to see your list one? L1's not there. Anyone? Okay, good. Then, in L1, just type in those 10 numbers. They don't need to be in order from small to big. One, two, three, four, five. That's five of them. What? Do you enter after each one? Uh, you'll see. But yes, enter after each one will work. You can always, there's there's other options for moving around with arrows and stuff, but, but I would just hit enter. It's easy to lose track, especially when there's a re lot of repeats. Now, at the end, I'm making sure I put in 10 numbers, but it says right next to my last number that I'm putting in, it says L1, parentheses 10, and that means that it's the 10th entry. That, no, I know for sure then that I put in 10 numbers. Now, all it would take is for you to type in one number wrong, which would be so easy. So just double check your data. Make sure it's mostly 15s, a cup, I think there's three 16s and a 14. You got it? All right, now. Would you agree that the middle of this group is actually somewhere around 15? Because they're almost all 15s. If I lined them up in the order from smallest to biggest, the median would be a 15. Because there's a ton of 15s. They're going to be in the middle. All right. What is that word for the, there's a ton of 15s? There's, it starts with M. Mode, very good. The mode is 15, it's the most common one. The median is 15, that's the middle one. And I bet you the average is even 15. Do you know that average means add them all up and divide by two? Or no, divide by how many there are. So if there's 10 of them, add them all up, divide by 10. That's what average is. All right. Do you get average and median are completely different? You gotta understand this. 
If I made one of these numbers into 150, don't do it. But if I did, do you get my average would go way up? But my median wouldn't even change? Because the middle number would still be the middle number? It doesn't care what the biggest number is? All right, so median is actually better than average a lot of times. Because you can have one big number that throws off your average, but the median doesn't twitch. So a lot of times when they report house prices, they report the median house price. Why? Because there could be one house on Lake Minnetonka, I've seen it, that's probably worth $54 million. And if you average that in, then everybody's house on average is super expensive. But it's really just that one that's throwing it off. So they use median for house prices a lot. They figure out the middle one. Okay, so how do we actually do something with this? Now that we've got it in there, this is going to feel weird, but hit second quit. And it clears your screen out. It doesn't wipe all your data, though. It's still there. And now we hit stat again. And this time, we don't want to edit the data. We already did that. We want to calculate something. So arrow, you know those four arrows? Arrow over to the tab that says calculate. And we're going to be doing one var stats. So hit enter on one var stats. Now there are going to be two people here. You either just got this screen just came up when you hit one var stats. It'll say one var stats on the top. And it'll ask you three questions. List, freak list, and if you're like, mine doesn't say this, it just means you've got the older version of the calculator. And calculate. Who has the new version so you have these lists, these choices? Raise your hand if you've got the newer version of the calculator. Okay, good. Then you guys need to say, I want my list to be L1. And then you can just ignore this. It'll default It'll, it'll do what it's supposed to do without you. You don't have to say a thing about freak list. And then calculate. You just get down to that and hit enter. This one isn't a question. It's like, are you done entering the other stuff? So now how do you get L1 to come up? It defaults to L1. But in case you need it, it's under VARS. If you need to enter this later, try to remember the VARS key. I like to think of that as variables. The VARS key is where you could get uh, all of those things. Okay. Uh, there's another way to get it, too. It's, there's a little tiny L1 as its own right above the 1 key on your calculator. Everybody, just for a second, see the 1 key on your calculator? Look above the one key. Do you see L1 right above the one key? So it's if you hit second one, you'll get L1. That's probably the fast way to get it. Yes? And how do we change it from a different... Like, Does, did yours default to something else? No, no. Okay. We want... Because we put our data in on L1, we want to use L1. Yeah. Do you get... You could if you are a really advanced user... Put data in on list one, list two, list three, and list four, and then start pulling different lists. And you could be like, I want to do one var stats, but on list three. How would we like put in that, change it to like alpha? You would arrow down to it, and you would then override it with whatever L you want, like L1, L2, L3, L4, L5. You see the, right above the one key? Do you see that? See that little L1 right there? Yeah. That's what you'd hit. You'd hit second, one key, and it would change it to... Well, if you want it to be L2, you could go a second, the 2 key, and it would change it to L2. You wouldn't find it hard to change this if you needed to. You just type right over it. Okay, now what about the other kids that have the other operating system? Man, I wish they only had one operating system. I hate that I have to give separate directions for everybody, but raise your hand if you did not have this, and you have the older style calculators. So, yes, I do need to tell you then. Okay, so what you guys do is... If you hit one var stats and you just hit enter again, it'll default to L1. 
Okay, so if you hit, hit one of our stats and just hit enter again, it'll give you the data. Now, for those of you with this newer system, you're gonna hit calculate and everybody do that, please. If you've got lost, you go back to stat and under stat, you're going to calculate one of our stats and hit enter and calculate and it'll say this list of things. X bar, 15.2. Any theories on what the heck that is? That is the mean, the average. That's what X bar means, is average. This squiggly thing with the X, any theories on what 152 is? Yes, and this is the math symbol for sum, sum of. This is the sum of all of them. Okay, this sum x squared, we pretty much never use it, so I'm just going to like cross it off. This next one is sx. That is a sample standard deviation. We don't use it. But the next one, that weird looking letter, it's a Greek letter with the X next to it, that's 0.6. That's an important one. That is called the standard deviation. Okay, for your ages, would you agree you were all pretty close in age? So you, your age didn't deviate from the average very much, did it? Know what I mean? There's one kid in here who was 16, or uh, it was three actually, that were willing to share, and they deviated from the average by about one. But most people were exactly at the average, and so your deviation was none. All right, let's talk about you and your shoe size and deviation. If I said the average shoe size in here was nine, how many of you would deviate from that average? Raise your hand if your shoe size is not a nine. Okay, good. Now, how about this? On one hand, hold up how much you deviate by. So if your shoe size is like a five, and I said the average is nine, you deviate by four, for example. Well, how far off the average five. are you? I'm saying the average is nine. How far off? Five. What do you mean by average? Like, I have a nine and a half. Okay, so you have to decide how far off are you from nine. Okay, there you go. So hold up on your hand. I know it's hard to hold it up, but you figure it out. How far do you deviate? Maybe you have to round it, like, round it to one or something. Don't overcomplicate this. Okay. okay, I'm looking at the average deviation, and it looks like most people are about two away. Some people are exactly right. Some people are over. I averaged your deviations. You see what I'm saying? Now, it's not exactly an average. I wish it was. But the standard deviation is much more complicated, and at this level of a class, we don't make you by hand calculate the standard deviation. But you can think of it as, on average, how far away from the average is the average person? Oh my gosh. All right, so let's say it's IQ. This would be very uncomfortable, so I'm not asking you to do it. But if I said the average IQ in here was 105, why did it go above 100? Well, because we're in an honors class, so it might be a little above average. So let's say the average IQ is 105. Some of you guys probably have 115 average. Oh, wait, sorry. Some of you have a 115 IQ, and the average is actually in here is 105. Then you deviate from the average by 10. Do you know what the actual deviation in the real world is for IQs? The standard deviation is 15 points. That means that people are... Actually, there's a wide range of intelligences out there. All right. So standard deviation means how much do you deviate from average? Our class here had an age deviation of 0.6 because almost everybody was the same age. The deviation wasn't much. All right. Now, if we go down, there's more stuff. Uh, the next one is min, and that's super obvious. Min x, that means the smallest one, which was a 14, smallest age, right? The next one's q1. Where did you see that before? Ooh, yeah. 
Q1 was way back here. You remember me talking about this? That Q1 is there. The Q1 for this data, sorry, my calculator turned off. There it is, Q1 is 15. So if I was gonna start making a box plot for this class and its ages, the lowest age was 14, the oldest age was 16, and that doesn't give us much spread for these, but I know that the average feels like it should be right here, but that is not the average. Do you remember what's in the middle there? The median. So we don't put the 15.2 here, that would have been the average. The median is coming up. Arrow down like three times and you'll see median is 15. Q3 is 16 and max is 16. There's a big list of all of these things and you have to know what all of them mean. Do you see that? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten stats that you just got. Now, I did say there was a few we'd never use, like the third one and the fourth one we won't ever use. Okay. Feel like you understand that? Good. So that's mostly what you had to do for today is learn how to do that. All right. So we're going to actually do the worksheet starting here because I think you're ready. Now, the worksheet's got some uh, tricky questions on it. I looked it over, and I want to start with problem two because in problem one, they mix in some probability, which sounds nice, but this was a kind of a long lesson, and I don't want to have that start with a weird, complicated problem. So we're just going to start with number two. So everybody find number two on the worksheet. Yes. Are we still doing number one? Nope. Number two. All right. Kaylee, could you read number two, please? The following data are the numbers of seconds taken from 12 contestants to be attacked on a team. Okay, everybody, stop for a second and go back to your stat and edit. And do you get that those 10 numbers we put in there before? You don't have to delete all of them. You can type over them. Know what I mean? You have list. You have a list one already. Just type over them as she says the numbers. Would you lead us? What's the first number we were supposed to put in? 20. Enter. And it changed my original number that was in there to a 20. What's the next number? 32. Enter. 15. Enter. 40. Enter. 26, enter. 25, 25 enter. 19, 19 enter. 28, 28 enter. 21, 21 enter. 16. 16, enter. Is that it? Actually, between the 21 and the 25. And it won't matter if we put it at the end. The order of this doesn't matter. So we can put a 25 at the end because we missed one and that's okay. And then there's a 22. And then there's a 22. Is that it? Yeah. Cool. Now, we'll know for sure if we put in the right numbers, if we compare with each other. So everybody go to stat and calculate one of our stats. Enter, enter a few times. And if you got X bar, which means average, to be 24.08, raise your hand. Cool. Then you and I entered the same exact numbers. See what I mean? Because I know there's no way that I by accident typed in two different numbers that still came up to the same exact average. Okay, so now read me the first question, Kaylee. Write down the mean and standard deviation. deviation, for deviation. All right. Do you remember which one? Well, the mean is pretty obvious because I just said it. Did they say median or mean? Mean. Mean. Okay, so there's the mean right there, 24.08. And then standard deviation. Do you remember? Here's the most common mistake answer, SX. Nope. That's not it. It's the weird one. I believe that's a sigma. It's a Greek letter. 
with the x next to it. Either way, it was 6.7. And do they say what decimal place to round to? Then let's just make it two decimal places, 6.71. That feels a little more accurate. Well, it is. The more decimal places you put, the more accurate it is. So we'll go two decimal places if it doesn't say. All right. And there must be another question. Okay, stop. This is the mean. If you are one standard deviation above that, you would simply add 6.71 to it, and then you'd know this new level. Okay, so the contestant is one standard deviation above it, then what? List the times of people who are only immediately eliminated. All right, and they're eliminated if what again? Okay, so I'm going to add these together, and I get 30.79. If anybody's above that, they're eliminated. Do you get that? We just added these together. Those are people that are one standard deviation above that. So I added it. Question about that? Could it be under it? Like, could you minus the yeah, you could, but that's not what they asked us. They said anybody who's above one standard deviation. Okay, so then I added it. All right. And then I got to go look at my data and see which people got thrown out. Because if they're above 30.79, they're getting thrown out. All right, so let's look at the data. Kaylee, can you tell me the numbers that you think should be thrown out? 32. Just those two get thrown out. So that is your answer, is that those two get thrown out. Is there a part B? Yes. Keep, part C. Oh, part C by now. Okay, part C. Recalculate the mean and standard DV. Deviation yep. for remaining Good. So do you get they want us to throw those two out? Can I go back and put in zero for them? No. no. So let's talk about how to do that. Go back to the list. That's under stat. Edit your list. Now this is important. If you do this wrong, you might wipe your whole list. And you'd have to retype them all in. Get on the 32. And what's your theory? And what would remove that DEL, the delete key? Yeah. All right. I hit the delete key, and it did remove it. Yay. The thing that really messes you up is if you go and you clear, you use the clear button, don't use the clear button. It can wipe the whole list by accident if you do it wrong. Okay, so use the DEL, delete key. All right, so the 40 also needs to be deleted. So you hit the DEL, and it's off your list. Cool. Now we just go back and do it again. So we go to one variable stats, stat, one var stats, under calculate, hit enter a few times. My new average is 21.7, is yours? Good, then you did it right. We both did it right then. And now they're gonna ask you some questions about that. All right, cool. I think you're getting it. If you have individual questions, this is the part where I would happily help you one-on-one -on -one up in front.